Okay, Eric here with 30 by 40 Design Workshop. Today I want to go over uh, the study model that I've made for the studio project. We'll talk a little bit about the design and some of the revelations I had uh, when I made this model. And uh, I just wanted to start by saying in architecture school, uh, typically architecture students will make things called study models. And study models um, are used just for that, to study different ideas, different building forms and shapes. And they come in a whole variety of um, scales, sizes, and level of detail. When you're first starting out and you're thinking about just building shape, basic building shape, sort of blocky, uh, what we call massing models are pretty appropriate. Um, and these are, this is a good example of what a massing model might be. And it helps us to start, begin looking at relationships between building forms and the spaces that they might create uh, between the forms different ways of orienting uh, building geometries um, or you know how we might interrelate building forms. So in this scale, um, at this scale and this level of detail, they're useful for space planning, uh, you know, basic generating basic building forms, roof shapes, um, things like that. Now, once you start thinking about the spatial qualities of, uh, of a, an architecture, let's say a barn, for example, with the studio that we're looking at, um, it helps to use a more sort of planar construction. And that's kind of what I've done here. This is far more detailed than one might typically do uh, for a regular study model. Um, and it takes a little bit longer to create it. But what I find in the process of doing this is that I start to learn a lot more about the project. Now, when I created this model, the original concept was for a barn, basically. And so I, the natural evolution to developing the floor plan, which we looked at in the last video, was to think about what are the elements that are pregnant in a barn um, that sort of make it, make it the most barn-like. And so obviously there's an idea about structure, expressing structure. A timber frame is an obvious reference. And is there a way to make that timber frame sort of modern? And I've kind of abstracted that in this model. Uh, the second thing is, you know, the quality of light. What is, what is the light like when you get inside the structure? Is it dark? Is it foreboding? Uh, is it light? Um, is it bright? Is there this sort of idea about um, ethereal light connections, light coming from other places that it's hard to sort of sense where, where that is? And, and so all of these things we can start begin to, uh, we can begin to study in the study model form. Um, and quickly make changes. So I think there are, in general, about you know five or so reasons why we might make a study model. The first would be to envision the actual scale of the project. And uh, when we build these models, we end up building uh, sort of little study model figures that go with it. And you can see then, you immediately get to sense how large this building is. If this scale figure were half the size, you'd have a sense that this structure was actually a lot, lot larger than it is. So by building um, these little scale figures and constructing the actual windows and door openings, we get a sense for how the spaces relate to the human form, which is a really critical aspect of any architectural project. The second thing that this allows us to do is to start analyzing materials, start thinking about you know, what will make this uh, barn-like in terms of a material expression. And um, in this particular project, the main house, the existing house uh, here, is a clabbered siding, it's a hardy plank siding. And the siding has a fairly uh, fine grain pattern to it, much like this. With the barn, I wanted the scale to be sort of pumped up, a little bit different. And so here I'm showing two foot planks. And part of this exercise is learning that, okay, well maybe two foot planks are actually, they actually feel a little bit larger than, than what I think we need. And so you can start experiment, quick, quickly experimenting with different scale and proportions of you know, siding materials. What happens if we change up the color on, on the siding? Um, we had this idea of for um, sort of creating these reclaimed wood um, sliding barn doors that would cover these openings, you know, this aperture. We talked about this being a lens for the seasons. Um, but as I built this model and I looked at, you know, what the siding was and I thought, well, there's no real reason for this natural wood sort of being here other than, you know, I, I sort of liked it um, as, a, as a color. But as I built this model, I started thinking, well, what if this were actually a pivoting door and that revealed the interior skin of a barn? You know, oftentimes when I think of a barn, I think of this exposed, um, you know, pine siding or, or a hemlock or fir siding that's inside. Wouldn't it be great if this sort of lens that we've developed in the concept were to sort of express itself on the exterior and became a pivoting door? 
And so it allowed us to study, to sort of take the next step in the evolution of the material palette here and start to think about these doors as being, in one sense, part of the exterior siding. And in, in another, it is a way to sort of open and reveal the interior construction and materiality of the, of the interior. Um, so that when these doors are open, you get to actually see, okay, this is part of a larger ordering system on the inside. And maybe that ordering system is plywood. And maybe that's the thing that really becomes this sort of modern expression um, of what the barn can be. And it led to all these other discussions that we had. Um, you know, obviously my wife and I are the clients in this. So having a discussion about what the materials inside are is really critical. And it's part of the next step. And it led us to rethink the idea of a timber frame. Do we actually need this? Is this actually the right scale for them? You know, it feels like with a, in a small space that actually might be too many framing elements. And is there a way to get some of those framing elements into, let's say, the loft construction where we can have some exposed framing, uh, but really lose the idea of this timber frame? In the process, we're simplifying it, we're saving some money, but we're replacing it with an idea that sort of connects it back to the barn and if we, we use this sort of idea where these, these panels are pivoting and opening and we're cladding them in a natural wood material, can we use that to start to connect the interior idea of a barn um, to some of the exterior larger openings um, and the finishes then becomes this sort of modern abstract idea um, that, that creates the barn connection rather than a more literal connection referencing the timber frame. Uh, then I start to think about, you know, these other ideas as, as the sort of natural wood skin applies to some of these other openings. So if this opening starts to, um, this sort of slot view out to the forest, maybe that could have a pivoting panel and the inside of those can again be wood uh, colored. And so that when you're viewing it from the inside, if one of these panels is closed, that creates this continuous wood surface inside. Maybe it's letting some light through. It's modulating that somehow. Um, so it's, it's a great way to study these materials and, and look at those proportions. The next thing it allowed us to do, and this is really important in this particular project, was to analyze the sun patterns. Now, I built this model and I'm able to take it out on the site and actually put the roof on it and set my eye down in close in here. And then I can see what it's actually, what the quality of light is. I sort of align it in the, in the proper orientation and as the sun moves around the site during the day, I can go out and view it at, di at different times of the day and see what the quality of light inside. One of the things that this led to was the idea about, you know, maybe we need to actually cut a hole in the roof and add some skylights in here. Because what we found was as we looked at the model throughout the day, it was quite dark inside. And by cutting this sort of strip of skylights in on this side, it really washed this, um, this long wall with a really nice even uh, quality of light and and it really changed the, the feel of the space so building a study model actually allows you to do some real-time solar studies as well so that's important um, it also makes allows you to make uh, some quick changes we can pivot these door panels out of the way and we can try something new you know maybe this opening isn't isn't the right opening and um, if you build a quick study model, you can start blocking up some of these things. You can try different roof forms. You know, what if this were a shed roof? You know, let's try that. So it allows you to make some quick changes. Once you have the sort of basic shell of this, you, you know, I don't attach this, this model here uh, for the simple reason that it's easy then to swap out different design ideas. You know, we can start looking at different shapes and what would it mean if we, if we sort of created an outdoor area here? Um, and so the study model allows for quick pivots and uh, careful study. And then the last thing that I think is the most important uh, actually of all is the thinking that accompanies the actual construction of it. Um, it doesn't have to be detailed to elicit that kind of thought, but it's similar to sketching in that respect um, in that you're cutting and making choices about materials and fudging things together and fitting things and thinking, you know, if this slides, what's this like? But there's a thought process that evolves along the way because you have to make certain decisions. Where does this you know, sliding door fit in the wall? Where does the siding end? What do the corners look like? It forces a different level of study than sketching or um, actually drafting this in the computer. You know, what's it like to have this filled with wood? What if there were a window here? Um, we can then pull this wall out and study what those things mean. And you can stick your eye in here and really have a good sense for what it's like. 
So those are some great reasons to, to build a study model. I really enjoy building models and it's one of the reasons I became an architect uh, in the first place before I sort of knew all of the, the nuances of what, about what practicing architecture was. So for me, it's a real, it's a great love and, um, and it, it's instructive as well in, in terms of the architectural process. So I find it really rewarding. Uh, I'll do another video probably on some basic model construction techniques because I think there's some things to learn, things that will make your models look a lot better for, um, for very little extra effort. I ended up cutting most of this on the laser cutter that I have just because I could, uh, but it's certainly not necessary. You know, in school you're using a ruler and an X-Acto knife or an Ulfa blade um, to put these things together, some Elmer's glue or a hot glue gun and um, they can go together relatively quickly. So I hope you learned something. Um, in the next part of the video series, we're gonna take the um, changes that we made and start incorporating them into the exterior elevations and have a deeper discussion on the material uh, palette.